Today's ridiculous theory, there never was a Vic or a Tim. There was only Teddy Bear. Hey guys, it is Mindos here playing some Catriel Layton and it has taken me until episode 12 to realise that the Joy-Cons have motion control so I can actually look around the scene properly without using the uh, analog stick. You just have to hold the L or the R. Amazing! Um, I'm learning things, new things every day. Uh, <laughs> so okay, the Teddy Bear. Right, that's where we were up to. <laughs> Ah, this teddy bear wasn't here before, was it? Oh, that's what it was. Oh, all those other things that I mentioned weren't actually the case. Oh, my witticisms. It doesn't really fit my image of the mayor. Haha, I suppose you wouldn't expect to find a cuddly bear in the office for Go Get a City of London Mayor, would you? I mean, that's exactly what I'd expect to find in Boris Johnson's office, to be honest, but you know. Uh, the truth is, so embarrassing may be, this old friend helps me relax when things are getting a little hectic. He doesn't have a political plate that's as in here. You seem so self-assured and confident. Do I? Well, I, I had quite a few soft toys when I was fond of when I was a little girl. I had one like this too. This isn't a soft toy, this is a puzzle. What? <laughs> it's a rainbow rabbit, puzzle number 26. Uh, okay, alright, so we've kind of got a bit of a variant of the four colour pro problem, it looks like. Looks like this white, cuddly rabbit needs a bit of colour, but there have been a few specific requests. You can use three colours, pink, yellow, blue. Pink should appear in seven places, yellow in four places. Same colour should not appear next to itself, and the body in both shoes should be the same colour. Okay, body and both shoes should be the same colour. Yeah, it's kind of a bit of a four colour problem. Uh, I mean... Logically, if pink's gonna... Ooh, okay, alright, so we just tap them to make them colours, but I can't put them back to white. That'd be way too easy. <laughs> alright. <laughs> uh, well, if pink's in, se in seven places, it stands to reason that those cannot be pink. Because that means that none of this stuff can be pink, which means that it's only pretty much like... Only five things can be that colour, the colour of the... Um, the body and shoes. So if pink is in seven places, yellow is in four places, how many total places have we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, 7 and 4 is 11, so blue is only going to be in two places. Which tells me kind of that blue is going to be there. Uh, yellow is going to be there, there, there. No, that, that doesn't quite work. Getting close though, it's just this this little situation here that needs fixing up. Maybe if that was blue, uh, and that was blue, so that can be pink, but then yeah, those can't be blue. Alright, well let's make those all pink, because, I mean, okay, those are going to be pink. That could be yellow, wait, yellow's got to be four places, so yellow's fine. Uh, wait, no, this is, this is, this seems good, is this good? Yellow's in four places. Three, four, five, six, seven pink places. Two blue places. Everywhere's coloured in. Uh, ah. This seems good. This is an interesting one. This certainly seems good. <laughs> 45 picker rats. It's a very colourful rabbit. Hop, hop, hooray. Uh, haha, I had a feeling that wouldn't stop you. My father bought this bear for me. Actually, it was a Riverside Festival from one of the street salts there. So, it had a special meaning for you then. Especially as my father is no longer with us. He was a very busy man. He used to work extremely hard, but even so, he always made time to take me to the Riverside Festival. He left to get a packet of cigarettes from the store and never came back. I love the festival and the times I spent it with my father. Ah, so many memories. There is no greater treasure than memories of your loved ones, is there? And I'm sure lots of Londoners feel the same way about the festival. People in the city have been making wonderful family members of for years now. I mean, the, the whole point is that, again, this was like a little kind of tiny out of the way festival. This was not a big thing earlier in this case. <laughs> I'd like to point out. Uh, but it is a terrible shame that the tendency has been falling in recent years. Alright. The festival must be a success. Are you alright, Mrs. Lohanita? Oh, I do apologise. I, I, I don't usually let myself get quite so animated. 
Please don't apologise. It's nice for us lesser mortals to see that even someone as cool and collected as you loses a little control occasionally. Pfft, lesser mortals? Speak for yourself, maybe. <laughs> lesser mortals. <laughs> lesser mortals. Come on now. I would have thought it's better to be true to yourself in a role like yours. Maybe some of us are a little too true to ourselves, I guess. I've had a good idea. I'd like to show you something. Okay. Is it something relevant to the case at all? Or are we just... Uh, okay, we're going to the balcony. Let's go to the balcony! It's a new actual location. Alright. <laughs> so, that's the place I can go to. That's not the move button. That is the move button. Sure. I'll go to the balcony. Can we see um, the festival from here? It's a nice view. Is that literally what you want to show me? I mean, you can see Big Ben. You can see Tower Bridge. You can see trees. <laughs> and London, I guess. <laughs> it's like all the stars have fallen from the night sky and landed on London. That's a view. And you can see the festival grounds from here too. Look. So you can. The festival lights look lovely, lovely as well. They do, don't they? It's just a shame that year by year there'll be less lights and less people enjoying the event. But see how bustling it is this year. All those people who'd forgotten about the festival over time have come back again this year. And I feel confident now that next year there'll be more people again. And even more the year after that. So yeah, this is I mean this is why you did it, right? <laughs> people bring in their children, and in future those children bring in their own children. You just want a legacy. This year's Riverside Festival is going to be very special indeed. Hmm. Why? Why is that a cutscene? <laughs> it's just like the most pointless, random, little, weird cutscene at all. Alright. <laughs> well, I'm very sorry for taking up so much of your time when you're so busy, Miss Lonita. That's quite alright. I enjoyed discussing the festival with you. Good luck with the investigation. I believe we're homing in on the truth. Alright, yeah. I mean, this, uh, I think we, were, we had five clues, right? So this is going to be the sixth. It's a special festival! Hooray! So special. Um, sure. <laughs> and that's pretty much the end of the case. All right. Uh, are we ready to actually end the case? I don't think so. We've not had a look around the balcony yet. Uh, that's kind of what I want to do. So we need to be on the lookout for hint codes. There's yet another one on Big Ben. Like, Big Ben must be the home of like a whole menagerie of hint coins. Uh. I mean, chimneys have always been the typical go-to for it, but, um, yeah. Oh, we've got a thing over here. There must be a lot of people living in a building of that size. London is looking a lot flatter than I remember. Like, there are very few high-rise buildings, which, again, calls into question the aging of this, uh, th like, the, um, the time period of this setting. <laughs> Uh, must be awfully tricky to remember who lives on which floor. So let's have a puzzle about it. We're going to have to be assigning people to floors. Neighbours. 27 neighbours. 50 picker rats. That's a lot of picker rats for a puzzle. It's definitely on the high end. Alright, so yeah, conflicting statements. These four people, A, B, C and D, those are their names. I mean, we can't really blame them for that. We can blame the parents, if anything. Um, I, to be honest, I... It's kind of amazing that they've all moved in next to each other with, with names like that. You know, there we go. Uh, can we work out their, from their comments which floor they each live on? I, I mean, again, we're assuming they're telling the truth. We're assuming that no one's lying. We're assuming no one's... Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Usual logic puzzle stuff. A says, I live three floors below D. Uh, select a number slot. Are they all... Right, okay. So they're all single-digit floors. Yeah, they're all single-digit floors. Okay. <laughs> Again, this is something that should have been clarified in the question, but sure. <laughs> B lives on the 7th or 8th floor. Uh, C lives on an odd-numbered floor. And the floors we each live on are an equal distance apart. So, uh, if they're equal di distance apart, then that has to be three, because there's no other factors of three. Like, it's either three or six, and you can't really fit uh, six in there. So that means it has to be one, four, uh, zero, four, seven, uh, ten? No, it can't be. 
Oh, no, it's going to be... Uh, it must be one floor apart, then. Yes. Because three floors apart is too many. So it must be... Um, a must be on the bottom. And D must be on the top. Uh, but C is on an odd-numbered floor. So... Uh, right, my question is... Based on my new found knowledge of being able to use motion control... <gasps> I can actually draw on the screen, except it's weirdly inverted... Uh, no, it's not really inverted. It's just really... I don't know. It's just its just a bit weird. Uh, anyway. Uh, right, so, we will put A at the bottom. We will put D at the top. Now, if B lives on 7th or 8th, that means that 7th um, or 8th must come here. So, D must be on 8th or 9th. Oh, man, this is really hard with motion control. But, hey, it's better... <laughs> We don't know what order C and D is, so C's got to be... I mean, as far as we know, B and C are somewhere here. Uh, so that puts A on either the 5th or the 6th, right? Okay. Man, this is this memo mode is not working. <laughs> I'm going to go back to using the analog stick. Uh, I live on an odd-numbered floor... So C must be on seven, I guess. Cause C can't be on nine, and C can't be on five. So C is on seven, B's on eight, D's on nine, A's on six. That's what I'm taking away from this. Uh That's what I'm gonna take that's what I choose to take away from this. How, how, okay. Oh, God, this interface is awful. Like, <laughs> there's a keyboard built into the Switch. Please, please, use that. Uh, C's on the floor, it must be seven. Oh, God damn it, there, seven. B, eight. Uh, so A lives three floors below D. B lives on the seventh or eighth floor. C's on an odd-numbered floor. D, yeah, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, matches all the criteria. Alright. That was, that was fairly straightforward. I was basically, basically using that time to mess around with memo mode and... Yeah. <laughs> Figuring out how far apart they live from each other is the sort of shortcut solution. Yeah. That was the, the first thing you can figure out. You have a view of so many different buildings from here, don't you? Yes! Mayor Leonidas certainly enjoys a spectacular vista. Oh no! Oh man, alright. Well, uh, let us... I guess, end the case? Do you have anything else to say? In your defence? The festival lights look so warm and welcoming. I can just picture all the festival faces down there right now. That's because you can see them by looking down! Because, like, the festival is supposed to be tonight, right? And it is night, so... Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I assume the festival is happening. All right, let's go to the case file. It's the end of case two. Solve the case. I've cracked it. This case is clear as crystals to me now. It is. I could have sworn we were getting further and further from the truth. Oh, it's later now that Nackford seeming like she's gone off on a tangent when I'm sure she's really solving the case her own way. I'm pretty sure anyway. I'm honestly... I hope so. <laughs> but I'm honestly not convinced. Let's call for Pet Hastings and ask him to meet us. The time has come for me to reveal the truth behind this whole affair. And I will be pointing at people. Hopefully on cue this time. Have you really figured it all out, cat? Tell on Miss Layton, please. There isn't long until I have to give the closing speech at the festival. Oh, don't worry. This won't take long at all. As you all know, the incidents that took place this morning follow the old legend of the Thames almost to the letter. Yeah, too much of a coincidence, that, obviously. Someone clearly made deliberate efforts to copy the legend. Quite right, Inspector. Somebody did exactly that. And it was you. All right, then. Who's the culprit, Cat? Yes, do it. Think first, Inspector. There's something more important than identifying the culprit. Wrong. And that is how crazy you are about festivals, Mayor Loanida. The point! It's far more important in a whodunit. How? How did you know? She's my dog got it! How have we not used Doggone It yet? Are you going to explain yourself, Cat, or what? 
Mayalo Anida, loving the Riverside Festival as much as you do. It became unbearable to watch its popularity dwindle over recent years, didn't it? Oh dear. Me. Go at least finish the line. So she killed him? Is that what you're saying? No, no. A festival lover would never do such a thing. Hey? But you said... It was all an elaborate show, made possible by the mayor's great power and influence. Part of the festival entertainment, if you will. I can't remember how early it was that I said um, that they're probably not dead, but I'm feeling pretty good about myself for that one. The murdered couple are alive and well, no doubt hidden somewhere inside this very building. But she's the one who asked for me to investigate the case. I'm sorry to say, Inspector, that I believe the Mayor thought it was a case you wouldn't be able to solve. Oh, his pride is hurt. <laughs> well, Catriel, I see you're quite the entertainer. <laughs> hmm? It's been an eventful festival, that's for sure. And a successful one, too. So did the mayor also put her on the trail as well? The um, the rival, uh, Parfetti? Because that seems like... That, I mean, that seems like it'd be a mistake, but she didn't actually play any kind of role whatsoever in this solution. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure she'll play more of a part in future cases. Yes. I'm delighted that my last festival as mayor hasn't been a flop. Thank you, Catriel. Uh, yeah. Again, I'm I'm a bit again, same with case one. I'm quite unsure as to where the actual legality line comes here. Like, I get there's not been a killing, but wasting police time is still. I mean, it feels like someone's done something illegal here. Are you retiring, Pepper? Yes, I must. I've abused my position as mayor. I just couldn't bear the thought of the festival my father always took me to being abolished. You see. But I've let everyone down. I see. Well, I'll be sad to see you go. Mayor Loanida, thanks to you, this year's festival enjoyed a record-breaking turnout. There's just one little problem. I mean, sure, but again, I, <laughs> I'm not entirely sure this was... Uh, moral? I don't, I, I, I don't know what the message is here. Feel free to fake your own death, guys, as long as it's for a festival. Oh? What problem? Have a gander at this. Goodness me, what? It's a proposal put forward by some of London's youth. They want the same performance you cooked up this year to happen every year, only bigger. I again, yeah, the, the moral of the story here is... Feel free to... Um, to, to I, I don't know. <laughs> They're suggesting calling the old love story thing the uh, the Riverside Musical, and they're planning massive participation from youngsters all over the city. I, I just don't believe it. I think London still needs you at the elm, Mayor Lamanida. After all, no one loves this city like you do. Uh, everything works out fine. Shall you just bake another cake in the shape of a giant festival? And it looks like next year's festival is gonna take some planning. Oh, Inspector Hastings! I don't know what to say! The missing couple made an appearance at the Riverside Show of Devotion that evening. That is a really small festival. <laughs> they explained everything that happened. The festival was an unprecedented success, uh, attended by more people than ever before. Should we count them? Let's see, there's probably about uh, 25, maybe maybe 30 people there, uh, judging from all the empty seats. <laughs> Alright, thanks to Ms. Melo and his hard work. It looks as though the festival will remain as one of London's great traditions, as a place where family can gather and make memories together that will last them a lifetime. Hooray! I mean, yay, everything ended happily. 
<laughs> Let's save the game and move on. Ah, another day with no inquiries. Is London really so cram-free? It feels like this is kind of where this case starts. I kind of wish it wouldn't launch you straight into another case. Maybe I should just stop here and... Uh... No, I can't actually, because I, I can't go and do the episodes without actually getting back to the menu, I don't think. So, yeah, we kind of got to carry on and at least see to the next case, I guess, and get to the point where we can actually not move around. If you've got nothing to do, why don't you tidy your desk? It looks like a dog's dinner. That mess of papers and books and goodness knows what else is a disgrace. Don't you worry, Cheryl, I have a system. I know exactly where everything is. Oh, I'm really glad it's using my uh, my little redesign. Leighton's there on the left, Mr. Herschel, Mr. the Professor. Oh. <laughs> Miss Leighton, Miss Leighton. Goodness, what is it, Ernest? Don't tell me the people of London have finally caught on to me. Are they queuing down the street? Oh, I do wish they were, Miss, but sadly, no. Well, that's a relief. <laughs> It'd be so terrible for business if we actually have some clients. Think about it, Cheryl. If people were queuing up to see me, I'd have no time for my afternoon tea. We need to get some motivational training. It's not about being motivated. I'm holding back, so I'm ready to respond with pep and verve when the situation is... Yeah, sure. <laughs> Alright, what do you want? Let's start the next case. I'm guessing someone's been in touch. Oh, you've won? Oh, amazing. Tickets to pre-screening of the new film. Oh. I thought you like won the lottery or something, but sure. I suppose that's a pretty good consolation prize. A naval advance, no sub for love. <laughs> Have we got a nautical themed uh, episode coming up? <laughs> so I was thinking perhaps you and I could go together, maybe. I mean, uh, not as a work thing. Catriel is busy, I'm sorry, Ernest. <laughs> You're definitely being turned down here. It's a Maverick Director. Maverick director, okay. <laughs> Is he a famous filmmaker? He's the, he's the, oh, he's the man of the moment, yeah. That Mr. Maverick director. Again, a ages this like so well. Uh, he breathed new life into the whole romance genre with a similar work. E.T., The Extra Hungry Terrestrial, and The Attack of the Munchies. That sounds like an amazing movie, and I want to go see it. <laughs> if that's a real film, I'll profess your archaeology. It's got everything, Shell. Suspense, drama, animal romance. Really, words can't do it justice. So what's this new film of his about, then? A naval advance knows up for love. It is about love and emotions, and it's packed with edgy scenes action. And it has a twist at the end. Oh, wow, this... Yeah, okay, sure. <laughs> well, you've just spoiled that there's a twist at the end. Ugh. No, I'm sorry. Don't, I'm not interested anymore. There are oodles of famous actors in it. The sets are supposed to be incredible, too. And there's probably going to be a case uh, specifically devoted to it, because, you know, otherwise you wouldn't be bringing up at this point. <laughs> oh, Ernest. I mean, yeah. No, you probably should give up at this point. <laughs> what would pique Miss Layton's interest? Of course! Well, Miss, I've also been given a coupon for a free portion of the brand new durian-flavoured popcorn. That sounds awful. <laughs> popcorn, you say? I don't believe it. I'm in. That worked, really. The way to a Leighton's heart is through her stomach. I'd be glad to go with you in that case, Ernest. Where is the film showing? When do we leave? Now she's straining on the lead to get there. The previews being shown at the Savaloy. Is that a sausage? <laughs> the Savaloy Theatre is known by film buffs all over the world. It used to just be a run-of-the-mill cinema. But about ten years ago, there was a huge renovation it turned into a luxury theatre. Since then, it's attracted all manner of cultural figures and celebrities from London. It's considered the heart of British cinema now. Yay! Nice little cultural lesson. See, this, this series aims to be educational as well as entertain, entertainable. I think I've said that exact line before and again messed up the last word on it. Uh, cinema of choice for London's elite. Now I'm interested. The popcorn at such a same cinema is surely going to be used to die for. But the films were exciting, miss. Leave it pins drops. We all know by now that cats rule by a belly. Of course, yes, a previous screening at such a prestigious location is going to be a big event. I heard that as well as lucky winners like myself. All sorts of VIPs have been invited. In that case, we will have to dress up. Yes, as what? As Leighton. As, as, as Professor Leighton. I, I need to stop like, referring to Professor Leighton as just Leighton because Catriel Leighton is the new Leighton. 
You have to make more of an effort. That is what a gentlewoman does. I'll go and change now. Just give me a minute. Do, do I get the chance to pick the outfit? Because if so, you are definitely going as Leighton. <laughs> Alright, please hurry. Just give me a minute, she says. I know human minutes are longer than dog minutes, but this takes the biscuit. Why is Shell now floating? I'm sure he wasn't floating there before, was he? He's, I, he's a talking flying dog this whole time. I never realised. No, really, why is this, why has this sprite been drawn up there? It was below before, right? In, like, every other conversation we've had. This feels weird. Uh, she's been around for a long time. If we don't hurry now, we're going to miss the show. It, he's like, is he sat on the cupcakes as well? Like, no, Shell, get down off the cupcakes. <sighs> How many outfits did you try on, Ka Kaaru? I say miss. She's all dressed up. <laughs> okay. I mean, sure. Do you look silly in this dress? It's amazing what a dress can do. I was hoping for a little bit of a reaction at least. Never mind, we better get going or we'll be late. Yeah, okay, alright. We're finished we're finished doing dress up. Miss Lane's an angel. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, this is all just a little bit on the weird side. Case number three! The stolen kiss. And we got like a theatre in the background. And I'm guessing we're going to the theatre. We're starting at the theatre. Alright. Here we are, Mr. Savaloy. It is grand, isn't it? And gaudy, even. I've never been sad before, actually. I am a little nervous. It's only a cinema. Yeah, come on, spin stripes. You're a matter of mass. Because she'll eat you every mass. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> uh, this isn't just something to be nervous about, Ernest. It's not like when I had to add another book to the seating pile on my desk. Tidy up! Bad dog. Anyway, enough of that. There are a lot of people here, aren't there? Have they all won tickets, do you suppose? Uh, it, it, it feels like we've, we've, we were probably sent these tickets for some reason. Uh, like we're part of a group. Um, I don't feel like he's won these legitimately. Uh, everyone's dying for the film to start. Over there, isn't that Emiliana? I, I wonder if that means something happened. She could be here investigating. I haven't noticed any commotion or anything. If there was an incident, that would liven things. Never mind, let's just go and get the information from the horse's mouth. It's not very nice to call her a horse. Ugh, that's just not very nice at all. Well, he's here again. Uh, yeah, obviously she's here. Those are the people we saw in the previous case. Uh, I think I think we're good. I think we're good for now. I think that is, that is an episode's worth of content. Next time, when we return, uh, we've got a couple of things to do before we actually get started on case three. Uh, we need to do some cleanup because we're gonna have a case coder. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and we need to go back into case two and mop up any hint coins and puzzles we might have missed. Uh, or that might be available now. So that's exciting, isn't it? First up, uh, however, we need to change because I'm I'm not feeling the, the gentlewoman in white outfit. I'm, I'm, yeah, it's a bit it's a bit too formal for the for the for the theatre occasion, so I think we need to we definitely need to change. Really, really, I actually can't change. Wait, no, I've got to buy an buy an outfit, right? Okay, <laughs> I know how this game works. Don't worry. Uh, you are going to the theatre dressed as Luke. That is what's happening here. Uh, yep, you're going to be changed into that, and perfect. Now you are all dressed up to go to the theatre. And she loves it. Excellent. I have chosen correctly. All right. <laughs> That's going to be next time. See you next time, folks.